Hello guys and welcome back to the Honda Resource. On this episode, I'm gonna be going over a few of the common issues that I see with these first generation Honda CRVs that come through my shop. Now, as you can see, we have several CRVs here. There's uh, one, two, three first generations here, one, two second gens, and then I think I got uh, four more second gens down here and another first gen, and then I've got a first gen up here in the shop. So we have uh, quite a few CRVs around here and it's, uh, it's pretty much always like that. So I just, like I said, I'm just gonna be going over a few issues that are pretty common on the first generation Honda CRV. I hope this video helps you out if you're in the market to buy one of these and uh, lets you know what to look for. So as I mentioned, uh, we have a few issues and one of our most common issues that we see on the first generation CRV is the lower ball joint. You can see these right here, the boots aren't in the best shape, but a lot of times the ball actually pops out of the cup you can also see the tie rod ends on this one aren't in the best shape either. Um, and they have some slack in them. So definitely front end pieces, mostly the lower ball joint. Occasionally you'll have some tie rod ends and sometimes these bushings on this uh, lower control arm. Uh, mostly this bushing here, not necessarily the back one. The next issue on the front suspension that's a common issue is the sway bar end links. These are notorious for making little popping noises like whenever you're going over bumps. So if uh, you're going over some bumps kind of slow and you hear a little popping noise, a little chattering in the front end, it's likely that it's gonna be these sway bar end links. These are very common issue and I replace a bunch of these. Um, they get a little bit of slack inside of them and then they make little popping noises every time you go over a bump. So, uh, to change those, you just take off the nut on each side there and uh, replace those. It has a one on each side, one there and one there. All right, so the interior on these, general, generally the fabric and stuff holds up pretty well. Occasionally, uh, I see a few that come through that have a water leak. It's generally in the passenger floorboard or if you're in a different country, uh, I don't know how it would fare, but in the U.S., the passenger floorboard, the right hand side. Uh, generally you have some moisture down there. Most of the time it's going to be from the uh, fresh air vent up on the like the windshield cowl outside. I'll show you that in a second. So on the windshield cowl, uh, generally to fix that uh, the water leak, you have to take off this and uh, there's a, a basically a fresh air vent under this uh, that leaks around that. There's some uh, DIY videos out about how to uh, fix that. I think some people like make a shield to where it deflects the water uh, that would come down on onto that uh, section there. Uh, I don't know. I, I've never fixed one of those that have leaks. So I've just kind of let them ride. Uh, but I just want to bring awareness to it. So if you have uh, a leaking floorboard, it's probably coming from up here. Um, also, a uh, very common issue is the clock not working. There's several DIY videos on YouTube about how to address that uh, if you're, you know, want a, a working clock. Most of the time aftermarket stereos have a clock on them if you desire a clock and don't want to fix that one. Um, but otherwise, the interior is usually pretty solid. No issues with the interior other than the clock and uh, the water leak. So moving on. All right, so another issue is the uh, door jam wiring. There's a wiring harness that connects in here, um, basically where the door hinges. And a lot of times those pins will break off of the connector. Now what that does, it results in um, loss of power window, loss of your power locks. So the power locks may not work correctly. Your windows may not roll down. Now I know all the windows um, switches are over here. And this one's actually kind of weird um, because I noticed yesterday, this is a customer's car, but uh, if you push up, it rolls the window down. If you push down, it rolls the window up. I don't know what's going on there, but I, I figured that out yesterday. This one's actually pretty rare here in Alabama. You don't see a lot of manual uh, first gens down in this part of the country. Most of those are all up in the Northern states. Um, but um, yeah, the, the door wiring is definitely a common issue on these. And um, like I said, most of the time it results in 
the window's not working, power lock's not working, it's things such, all this stuff that would work in the door, speaker, mirror, etc. Uh, there is a guy that sells a pin kit. Uh, it's basically a little pigtail kit. You can uh, go on there and replace the whole pigtail. A lot of times, I just take the harness from the door and the harness from the door jam. I cut the connectors off, solder them all together, and call it good. And then it just don't have the connector. If you ever need to take the door off, <laughs> you're SOL. Um, but that's how I fix it without having to spend a lot of money, and it just makes it a quick fix. It is a lot of soldering because it's like 20 something wires, I think. But at the end of the day, you're going to be doing that anyway if you could buy the little pigtail kit. I'll put a link for the pigtail kit in the description if I can locate it. Okay, so for the most part, the engines in these, which is a B20. Now this one's uh, this one's a little different because this is a a 99 to 01, but it has a 97, 98 motor in it, the B20 B4. Not sure why the owner put that in here, but that's what he did. So, um, generally speaking, like I said, or, um, the engines are pretty solid in these. Uh, most of the issues I see are a few oil leaks. Um, like the cam, this little cam cap right here, it just pops right out. So, um, you can use a flat head and pop it out. I've got a video on that. You can check that out up in the right hand corner and uh, see how to replace that. And then also, uh, they have a very common issue with the oil pan gasket leaking. You can see this one is leaking a little bit. Um, it's a pretty common issue. So, to replace those, I have a video on the channel that you can check out in the top right corner, right up here. And it'll show you how to do this and it'll show you the best one available on the market. Be sure to check that out. Good stuff. And then um, also pretty common issue with these is they suffer from what they call valve seat, um, I think it's valve seat recession. So what that essentially does is the valve seat deteriorates and it makes the valves to where they're over tightened. So you do a valve lash adjustment. It's recommended every 30,000 miles on these. And if you need to know how to do a valve lash adjustment, I have a pretty thorough video on doing the valve lash adjustment on the channel. Again, check it out in the right hand corner. So, um, but that'll solve that issue for the most part and provide you a little more longevity, keep you from burning some valves. And also occasionally on the all-wheel drive models, you'll have a little chatter sometimes in the rear diff. Like when you get on it, you'll hear a little roar, a little, little noise. So uh, to do that, to fix that, generally just a quick uh, fluid change will fix that. It's dual pump fluid. Uh, it's available on my website if you're interested in that. Uh, check the description for the link. Uh, but it usually takes 1.1 quarts and you just drain it here, fill it here, done. So anyways, that's pretty much um, you know, the gist of the major issues that the first generation Honda CRV has. Now, there may be other issues that arise through, um, you know, different areas of the country. You know, some may suffer from rust. We don't really have that here in Alabama. Uh, I guess we're fortunate, whatever. Um, I wouldn't work on cars if I lived in an area that was saturated with rust. It just, it doesn't, uh, I don't like working on rusty cars, so um, <laughs> there's that. So if I missed any issues, make sure to drop those in the comments and let me know what I missed. I know there's gotta be something that I've missed. There's always gotta be that one, one thing, right? Uh, but as long as you properly maintain these, you know, doing the valve lash adjustments, doing uh, spark plugs and spark plug wires, time belt water pump, keeping your fluids changed mechanically, these things are pretty solid. So if you're looking to obtain one of these first generation Honda CRVs, you know, don't, don't let this video scare you. That's not the intentions of this video. It's just more or less to uh, lead you and show you things to look for whenever, uh, if you're in the market to obtain one of these. Uh, like I said, they are pretty solid. I've had several of these and I think right now I think right now we have one, two, three, I think there's four first gens here. And then we have two more that are up at my buddy's house. 
Oh, I'm sorry, we have five first gens here and then two at my buddy's house. Most of the uh, items that I just outlined as being the issues such as the ball joints and the engine stuff, you know, I've got videos on the channel to fix those. So be sure to check out the first generation Honda CRV playlist. Appreciate you guys checking out the channel. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Hope to see you on the next one. Peace.